Hello students, in this video we are going to study about the physics of compression. So let's begin the first important terms which are related to physics of tablet compression includes the first one compression. So compression of powder means reduction in the bulk volume of the material as a result of displacement of gaseous phase under pressure. We can say that once the pressure is applied, the gases gets removed, right, as well as it results into reduction of the volume of the material, right. Then the next important term is compaction. So, so it is a general term used to describe a situation in which powder material is subjected to some level of mechanical force. Then the next important term is consolidation. It is increase in mechanical strength of the material resulting from particle particle interaction. Then next important term is decompression generally in tablet manufacturing. So during this uh, manufacturing the compression process is followed by decompression stage as the applied force is removed. This leads a new set of stress within the tablet as a result of elastic recovery which is increased by the force necessary to eject the tablet from the die. Then the next one is deformation. So change of the geometry of the solid when it is subjected to opposing forces is known as deformation. Also the amount of deformation is called strain then coming to next one that is events that occur in the process of tablet compression the various steps included are the first one transitional repacking then deformation at the point of contact then fragmentation and or deformation next bonding followed by a uh, deformation of the solid body then decompression and the last one that is ejection. So let us discuss now one by one. The first one transitional repacking also known as particle rearrangement. So the particle size distribution of the granules and the shape of the granules determine the initial packing that is the bulk density as the granule movement occur at low pressure. The granules flow with respect to each other with the finer uh, particles entering the void between the larger particles and the bulk density of the granulation is increased. However, spherical particles undergo less particle rearrangement when, uh, as compared to that of irregular particles as the spherical particles tends to assume a closest packing arrangement initially. Then the next one is deformation at the point of contact. So when the particles of the granules are so closely packed that no further filling of void can occur, a further increase of compression force causes deformation at the point of contact. Here you can see the diagrammatic representation of stress applied resulting into deformation and then removal of stress. If moving to original uh, regain, then it's elastic deformation and original state lost, then it is called as plastic deformation. If the deformation is appeared completely, that is returns to original uh, uh, shape upon release of stress, it is called as elastic deformation, whereas plastic deformation is deformation that doesn't completely re uh, recover after release of stress is known as plastic deformation. Then one more important term here is yield stress. The force required to initiate a plastic deformation is called as yield stress. Then here you can see fragmentation and or deformation, uh, deformation which have been represented. Then at a higher pressure fractures occur when stress within the particles become greater enough to 
propagate cracks then fragmentation causes further densification of the infiltration of the smaller fragments into the void space with some material fragmentation doesn't occur because the stress are released by plastic deformation plastic deformation may be through a, a change in particle shape and as the sliding of the uh, groups of particles in an attempt to release the stress we call it as viscoelastic flow such deformation produces new clean surface that are potential areas here you can see in diagram that is higher pressure resulting into crack formation then increased in number of particles right because of cracking you get a new particles and formation of new surface area so this is nothing but fragmentation and or deformation then the next step that is bonding so several mechanism of bonding in the compression process has been conceived uh, but they have not been substantiated by experimentation and have not been used in production of the compressional uh, properties of the materials the three main theories which are there for bonding include the mechanical theory then the uh, intermolecular theory and the liquid surface film theory then the next one that is deformation of the solid body as the pressure applied uh, results or the pressure applied is further increased the bonded solid is consolidated towards a limiting density by plastic and or elastic deformation of the tablet within the die then the next one that is decompression so the success or failure of a uh, produced of an intact tablet depends on stress intended by elastic rebound and the associated deformation uh, process during decompression and ejection as the upper punch is withdrawn from the die cavity the tablet is confined in the die by a, a what we can call it as radial pressure consequently any dimensional change during decompression must occur in the axial direction then the next one that is ejection ejection that is as the lower punch rises and pushes the tablet upward there is a continuous residual uh, die wall friction as the tablet is removed from the die the lateral pressure is uh, relieved and the tablet undergoes elastic recovery with the increased 2 to 10% in the volume of the portion of the tablet removed from the die so this is all in this video thank you